order at 7.06. Um, so first up, the approval of last month's minutes. Um, I just wanted to pull them back up. I skimmed over when I got home and I did not see any needed corrections. Did anyone else see anything? And hi, Katie. Anything else from the minutes last month? Perfect. Okay, uh, do we have a motion to approve? Thanks. And second? One second. Great. And I can go ahead and sign. larger agenda items today so I was hoping just to jump right into them um, if that's all right with everyone and we'll forgo the question this week um, sorry I'm trying to connect obviously and I'm having a hard yeah, time yeah I'm having a hard time too. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna use my phone as a hot spot um, okay so the first um, and, and I'm saying this without looking at my notes so I might get names wrong now um, but the first order of new business is a board membership update. And uh, I wanted to tell you all about some membership changes for the board. Um, so we did have, we had, we had one member roll off of the board uh, before that time that term was up. So we are short a member now. That was due to some personal reasons, including moving outside of the city limits. Um, so what that means is we're gonna be running a member short until fall. Uh, we are going to be holding, I, I won't be here, but everyone else will be holding another election. There'll be, the, the spot will be open up in the fall, which will be the next time that that council, or that the city uh, hires, hires, uh, appoints, appoints, yes. Yes. Like it, appoints, <laughs> approves a new member. So there's two times a year that the city does that? Yeah. Yeah. And if we had a full board, we wouldn't, you know, have an open seat. Um, okay. So I did want to also share that Katie and I interviewed uh, the candidate, Nicole, for um, uh, one of the two open positions. And um, we uh, sent off a recommendation in support of that uh, candidate for one of the seats to, uh, to city council I believe this week. Is that right, Tracy? Last week was my, it's Monday today. Last, end of last week. Um, so and then that uh, she's gonna be, she'll be a great addition. So there still is a formal interview with City Council. There's a very quick, about five minutes. Um, and then that position will start. My understanding is, and anyone jump in if I'm incorrect, that it will start after next month, that those positions will be approved in June, and then that person would hop on in July. One of the things that that does is it does change the quorum for the meetings, just being a member short. Um, so uh, that's just something to pay attention to in, in the next few months because we always have to have the majority here um, to open the meeting. And so we would need three board members um, to, to, to hold a meeting. So if more than two are absent, we're not able to, to move forward the meeting. Any, and Katie, please feel free to jump in because thank you for being there as well. Um, yeah, Kat. So we will be starting in July then? Yes, yes. If approved by city council, it should be starting in July. So we will have four, four people for this month, next month, hopefully July, like probably July, um, and then hopefully get a fifth person in the fall. There's no way to do like a special election or something. No, I think they're pretty scheduled um, with the rest. Okay, and I'm seeing nods for Susie. Okay, any other 
questions or, or discussion. I'm sorry, somebody asked yeah. if this was said. I didn't hear it say out, said out loud. Yeah. Rihanna is not on the board anymore. Yeah, sorry. I was seeing as probably my like, Rihanna is not on the board. Pro, you know, process of elimination. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Rihanna has, has rolled off. Okay. Rolled off is the wrong word. Rihanna has unfortunately had to step down. That's so there are two openings. Yep. That is yeah. including her, the one that she's making. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the timing was such that. Um, Right. We didn't have a surplus of candidates anyway, but the timing was such that it wasn't like there was one. Candidate. Yeah, there was one candidate. Okay. And, and the timing was such that it was, you know, like like I don't think it would have worked anyway. So um, totally. So how do we um, recruit or advertise for these openings, or how does the city do that? Um. So I, I think it's the city does it. Mm -hmm. um, I really hope that um, I happen to, and I guess this is too soon. Yeah. I, I originally learned about this just by like looking for a volunteer opportunity, and so okay. I thought like let me look at the city website uh -huh. and then the city boards, and there happened to be one. So I think it personally would be great if like there was more uh, awareness of these types of roles, but I know that's difficult like with any type of raising awareness in volunteer positions. Yeah. I mean, they push it out on their city Instagram, the Facebook page. Right. So I've seen it yeah. on social media, but I also follow those group, their sites, so, yeah. or their pages. So, so Susie, I, I know that this is a slightly different from, from the circumstance mm -hmm. because there were four, I mean, four open seats for the Longmont Housing Authority Board, but I did see an advertisement for a paid advertisement for that on the Longmont Leader. So I am wondering if the city does ever do paid advertising for open um, seats where they're kind of deficient during the fall recruitment, if the library can just be included in any advertising, paid advertising outside of kind of the normal channels. Because the Longmont Housing Authority is us. We are. Yeah, the but the, the, the authority, the board, the, the advisory board the advisory for the Longmont board, Housing yeah. Authority. I, they they had so they had so many open seats. I don't know how it's going, but there were so many that um, I saw an advertisement for it on the leader. I'll ask who put that up there and see if that's something we could do for all. Of it. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if this is possible as well, but I, I think even just like a physical flyer in the library uh, for this specific one might draw because um, I mean it's library frequent library patrons are mm -hmm. or who are interested yeah um, so i just wanted to share that mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah that means the programs on it could be one of those rooms mm -hmm. that'd be great i wonder if letting people know that you can attend via zoom would be helpful i don't know if that's out there but well I think, it makes it much more doable for me. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. It's somewhat tricky because we need to make sure the meetings are open to the public. So we've been mm -hmm. doing that in a hybrid manner. Um, and I, I hope we continue, but uh, I think it's a little trickier to communicate that maybe. Right. It is a little tricky because the meetings are officially in person, but we are given the flexibility to offer a hybrid version. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we can really sell it on that. Um, it could become a virtual only meeting. That's something the board could decide. Yeah, that might be worth looking at. Would the public attend virtually then also? They can. In that form, if it's a virtual only meeting, yes. Right, yeah. And so it's structured a little bit different. I mean, it would look the same like it does now, but right. the Zoom. Um, public will be able to join the Zoom meeting at a, for, at a certain period of time at the beginning of the meeting right. yeah. and have that opportunity, plus it gets recorded that way. Right. So right. It, it adds a couple steps, but it's... Yeah, we haven't talked about that. Yeah. I mean, that was the way everyone was doing it. Yeah. yeah. Or the before mm -hmm. the old mm -hmm. COVID days. Yeah, that might be <laughs> something to consider yeah. doing here. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, questions or, or points to raise for that one? I just have a question. I think there was some confusion about my term when I will term out. You know, we were talking about last one. Yes. Tracy can look that up either during this meeting or or immediately after she has that info, I'm pretty sure. Thanks, Tracy. Especially given the little confusion that you went through. Yeah. Right. Just so minor. That's what I think. Sure. Because yeah. I came in through a person, right? And so there's like a little bit of a stagger. Yeah, and that that's what happens when they're like, whenever in the fall, if, if someone applies and fills Rihanna's position, it'll fill that term. So if like a person is up in a year, then that new person is up in a year. That's just mm -hmm. the way it works. But a normal new person is what? Three. Three years. I want to say three, but Tracy, let me know if I'm wrong. Yeah. Three terms? Three, three years. years. And you can do two consecutive. Two, no more than two terms. And then you have to have a year off in between. So obviously right. Cynthia will be back in a year. Mm -hmm. Is everyone? <laughs> so I'm, just, I mean, I'm pretty sure I started in 2018, so I feel like I could be getting close to six years. But. So Catherine, your recent term started in 2023 in July, from what we have records of, and it ends in 2026, June 2026. Okay. You still have two years. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that's going to end up being more than six years, but. My, mine was too covered. <laughs> okay. And I, I think it was, uh, I don't think it was supposed to be. But I, because I came in on a temporary, like on a, somebody had rotated off and out of your left and then COVID, I can't really miss that. Catherine, up. I mean, you'll leave the board when we tell you to. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the door will be locked yeah. one day. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised That's a joke you know for the public. I mean, yeah. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we're on. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I do something. Um, okay. <laughs> other other questions or discussion points? Okay, this leads us into our next item of business. And I'm really hoping we can do this today. But if need be, I, I know Kat won't be here next month. Uh, if need be, I will be here next month and we could hold officially hold election. Um, but I, what I'm hoping is that we can have a conversation uh, because I know I've talked to everyone individually, um, but I'm hoping we can have a conversation and uh, of course if anyone wants to jump in and, and volunteer right away uh, for, for chair or friends of the Longmont Library liais liaison position, uh, but we do need to hold board elections and we, we've talked about this as well, we talked about last month, um, and so we need to elect a chair, we need to elect a vice chair, and we need to um, elect a, a friends liaison. And um, so I'm gonna pause just in case anyone wants to jump in right now. Okay, I, I thought that would, I thought that would be a, a pause with no, <laughs> with no jumping in. Wait, so I think a, a couple of things I, I want to share. Um, the chair position, first of all, uh, the main. Duties are, of course, presiding over the, the uh, and I'm actually reading this from the bylaws, um, presiding over meetings of the board, calling special meetings in accordance with the bylaws, which has never happened since I've been on the board, but it could. Um, signing documents and seeing that all uh, actions of the board are properly taken. Realistically, what that means is running these meetings, and then I think it's very helpful to meet with the library director um, a week before to discuss the agenda items and anything that's come up in the last month. Um, that does also involve um, attending city council mm -hmm. meetings occasionally, but we've all really taken a turn on that. Thanks again, Jamie, for presenting the annual report uh, last month. Um, so I think we're all pretty aware of what that looks like. Um, the duties of the vice chair are during the absence, disability, or disqualification of the chair, the vice chair shall exercise or perform all duties and be subject to responsibilities. Um, the friends of the 
Longmont Library liaison position are, are much more amorphous. Um, but Jamie's done a great job really building that relationship. Previously, um, for anyone who's new, um, we had tried a kind of rotating schedule of having someone from the board attend a meeting that did not work. That also was interrupted somewhat by COVID. Um, but, it, but it's been really great, I think, to have a single person in that um, in that role. And so, Jamie, if you don't mind, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit mm -hmm. because I, I think I know we're all very busy, and I know these are volunteer positions. And so, I'm trying to think of ways that we could lessen any sort of time load. And so, I'm wondering if you have any ideas for that. Well, I do because perfect. go for it. Um, I first of all, I enjoy. The, that role right. very much. Um, I probably personally choose to put more time into it than the uh, than the role really requires uh -huh. um, because I also volunteer with them. Right. But I have been thinking for the past year: um, is this sort of the connection that makes the most sense? Um, in other words, having a representative from uh, from this board attend their uh, monthly meetings, their board's monthly meetings. Um, I don't think that it is. It feels very one-sided, and I often feel, um, aside from, again, my personal interest in volunteering with this bad work, um, duplicative, mm -hmm. uh, especially if John's there to throw any shade your way, but, you know, sometimes I'm there just saying what happened in this meeting, and then I come here and tell you what happened in that meeting. <laughs> um, so, number, so is it in the bylaws that this has to be, okay. No, it is not. It is, it's actually the, the three roles, the, the roles that are strongly, that are described in the bylaws are the chair and the vice chair. The, the full role, um, is under the category of other appointees, the board reserves the right to appoint members to other specialized roles as they deem fit. So we have, I think what matters is that relationship, uh, but we have, what that looks like, we have um, room. What? So three ideas mm -hmm. that might feel more efficient right. is um, one to switch off um, not who attends the meetings, but uh, perhaps someone from the Friends Board can attend this meeting for like one month, and then someone from this board attends that meeting. So it's an automatic 50% reduction in meetings for whoever represents mm -hmm. the advisory board. And it gives, in my opinion, we give the Friends Board uh, a little bit more of a taste or a window into how we operate and particularly how we structure our meetings which I find to be very comforting and dependable. Nice. Uh, second idea would be uh, to question whether regular meeting attendance is necessary to keep the two groups um, aligned or if there is some other mechanism of communication whether it's a reward or I, I haven't thought through the details but that has been a question is, is it necessary to attend in person is it necessary um, to attend every month because again I, I feel like that relationship between the two groups is an essential one um, so I would, I would really hate to see that fall away. And then the third idea is, um, would this board consider, and would their board consider, a joint meeting quarterly? That would have, uh, between the two groups, uh, hash out somewhat of a, a template for what the agenda for those meetings, and maybe it's only part of the meeting, but um, that would be 
interesting to have many voices represented in the space um, and talk about where your work um, intersects and how we can both together support the mission of the library. Thanks so much, Jamie. I, I want to, I have some thoughts I've also been thinking about this, obviously. And so, Katie, Catherine, I know that I, I have thrown this out there. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm interested if you have any thoughts, but if not, please don't be concerned because this is very last minute. And then John, I'd also love, love to hear your thoughts as well. Um, I was thinking somewhat similarly, uh, somewhat in a similar fashion, uh, but I was actually thinking with, with the chair and the liaison wants to meet for a half hour meeting quarterly, um, it's, but I like the idea of both boards coming together. There's, I think, some logistical stuff, such as our meetings need to be open to the public, they need to be advertised within a certain amount of time, and so on. Um, so they, they would have to be all right with that. Um, I, my understanding is that our meetings are more constrained by the nature of what, the, what we do, who we are, um, where, where theirs is not as a um, nonprofit, I'm forgetting the numbers right now, um, organization. Um, but I also really like inviting them in, and we as a member of the public, but it meant making sure knowing the, that they are welcome. Um, and maybe we could even do that strategically. Maybe part of this person's role could be to keep a lookout on the agenda and, and share anything that might be of interest to their friends. Um, but let me, let me pause for a moment. And Catherine, Katie, any thoughts that y'all have that are coming to mind on this? I mean, I'm just really grateful for everything Danny has said to build that rapport. And I guess, you know, it seems like it's been fruitful and it's awesome that you're willing to keep volunteering with them. Um, I would be in favor of anything that you think would work since you know so much better kind of both sides of the, the picture here. I think <laughs> obviously they're always welcome to join us, um, but if you think it could work with us, contact or I just don't know if making an extra meeting yeah. is more trouble or less trouble, you know? First, whoever does it. Um, I have not ever served in that capacity, so I can't really speak to it. <laughs> but I defer to you all who have done it, you know. Thanks. Katie, any thoughts come to your mind right away? Oh, you're muted. I'm not sure about that. I actually like the idea of, um, you know, just a one-on-one -on -one session quarterly. Um, I don't know how that feels for Jamie, though, having done it, because uh, certainly they're, you know, they're picking the person who is doing that, you know, just like we're picking the person who is doing that. And I don't know if that would feel like it would restrict it but certainly if it's one-on-one -on -one, um in theory the meeting should be able to be much more time managed because it's just two people but on the flip side because it's just two people the, the flow of ideas might not be as great yeah just to give you yeah just to... Oh. okay let's try this yeah, just, I, I, I don't know, a bit, uh, kind of is a good point that, that does create extra meetings, perhaps. I, I really want to simplify, not complicate. I have a tendency to complicate whenever I come up with ideas. Um, <laughs> I know that's my natural tendency. Um, okay, so we have a couple options, and, and I want to uh, ask the three about what you think. Well, actually, first, John, if you, do you have any input? On, on this, um, what would be a uh, any of these ideas that you think would work well in terms of our relationship with with the friends? With the friends, I think. Um, I mean, Jamie made a good point before. I mean, I've met the friends meetings yeah. as well. You know, I, I think as far as managing individual time, I mean, it's good to have a board representative mm -hmm. there, I suppose, but it also maybe not every month. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that's, I, I do like the idea of a joint, like a court, whether it's quarterly or whatever, I think you're right, because of the board logistics, like if we have more than two people, it's a meeting, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, that could, that could maybe serve as that's how 
that liaison role is, is done, just more at a group level rather than this one person going back and forth. So the in between can be myself or Tracy for that matter, because we're both there, you know, but maybe that kind of joint effort every now and then, you know. Or just invite them to a standing board meeting. Oh, just yeah. to be clear, when I suggested a joint meeting, I imagined that it would be a one of the ones yeah. that we already have scheduled. Okay. Yeah, that, that would, would make sense. Be, then then you're yeah. not creating a separate meeting. That no. totally okay. makes sense. Yeah. That, that, you know, so you kind of have this official invite of a friend's board to come to whatever meeting of this mm -hmm. that already exists. Mm -hmm. You know, and then yeah. essentially they're there. Sure, they're there as friends board, but they're really there as public, right? So, and, and maybe well, but yeah. Go with, with with the fact that they would have to to be there as public invited to be heard, are there similar constraints like with city council meetings that they can only speak for three minutes, or are they allowed to to how how does that work with somebody showing up from the public? So I, our meetings, I think. And my understanding is that we do have leeway with this, and so we have a section public and ready to be heard, but I don't think there's anything also preventing us from putting an agenda item that is something like friends updates or yeah. board updates for the friends. So I, I think it could easily be during public and ready to be heard, but also a separate agenda item. Yeah, I think that would be better than anything during the, the public invited to be heard section just in case we were ever to have to put constraints on the amount of time the public can speak mm -hmm. um we wouldn't want to have to blanket the friends into that same category correct yeah. Yeah. do we want to move forward with whoever the friends representative will be for next year that's first of all some of these details can be worked out a little bit but that we will follow a less time intensive model and that we will uh, move forward with inviting them to quarterly or, sorry, I think in semesters, or like mm -hmm. biannual uh, meetings. And then whoever this position might also just keep an eye out for anything that really pertains to the friends and, and, and share agenda items or, or minutes, uh, as that makes sense. Does that seem like less of a time commitment to everyone in a healthy way? I think so. I guess I also just don't know the people on the friends committee and is this going to come across as any kind of a slight? Mm -hmm. I don't believe so. And in fact, I, I would be in favor of not deciding on the, the specific uh, schedule just yet because on Wednesday is the next friends board meeting. And I would be interested in hearing from them what feels like the right frequency and right. context. Okay. Right. Jamie, okay. so when when are friends meetings? Um, they are the third Wednesday of the month. So they at yeah, what time? Fourth Wednesday. I'm sorry. Thank you. Six p.m. Six p.m. Okay. For one and a half hours. One and a half at most. Yeah, they're pretty well, short. Yeah. But I, I feel like you're, we're typically, um, like after the friends meeting, you have a long stretch before the next board meeting. So when I'm reporting on what happened in the last friends meeting, it, it's a long time ago now. Yeah. So there's a number of reasons that we figuring our model might make sense, it sounds like. Okay, so then what I'd like to do is, um, if, if we have, and I'm not like officially asking yet, but if we have volunteer for this position, um, that knowing that the model will follow something similar to what we've been discussed, uh, what's been discussed with the details to be finalized um, after, um, in, the, in the coming weeks. Basically, and, and also realizing that we do have the ability to refine and, and iterate as needed. Does that sound good to everyone? Okay. Right. Does that sound good to you? Yes. Cool. Okay, so I, I think, and I'm not, this is still an informal discussion. I have not made any sort of motion where we're not officially voting. 
Um, this is more getting a temperature of the room. Um, knowing, knowing that, would anyone be interested in putting their name forward for either? I'm going to start with these two because these are the heavier lifts. So either the friends liaison or for the chair position. Thanks, Jamie. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Great either. Uh, do you? Would you have a preference? <laughs> Or just depends on kind of what? I think it could be combined. Okay. If needed. All right. If I had a preference, I don't know that I have a preference. Okay. Right. Right. Anyone else interested in putting a name for it for the chair and or the, the friends liaison, realizing that if we don't have a separate friends liaison, those duties can be rolled up into the chair's duties. There's like a lot to put on the chair. Yeah. It, yeah. How many hours a month would you estimate the chair will? Not really the meetings. meeting you've been doing with the with the friends. A, a couple, like not not a lot, because it's it's a weekly meeting with John. Monthly. Sorry, monthly, monthly meeting with John. Some. Uh, yeah, sorry, I don't. I know that yeah. was, you were gonna resign. Yeah. Right yeah. Here. <laughs> it's really only like a half an hour. Crap. Making sure and communicating, emailing counsel, um, and I'll whoever this position is, I'll go over this in detail, uh, you know, over coffee or Eric or something. Um, uh, making sure that one's like ready for the meetings, uh, reading over last month's meeting minutes, um, and then you know, I, attending council meetings or, or kind of whatever whatever makes sense out, out in the community. And so for some months, for many months, that's only this meeting and meeting with John. And maybe like a little bit of, making sure Tracy gets the agenda items, uh, just a few emails. Occasionally that's more, but it's it's not a huge time commitment. Yeah, Catherine. So I think that the only thing is, you know, I would be willing to do it, but I don't know I'm trying to change the level of stress in my life. I'm retiring from teaching, and I'm going to school full time in the fall. And I just don't know if that's, it's got to be less stressful than it has been. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm not going to know, really, until I do it in the fall. I mean, I'm going to be like subbing and stuff, you know what I mean? So I think my, <coughs> my anxiety about it is just this is like a period of a lot of transition for me. And so I almost wish that there was a way that we could sort of share the position or be like, hey, you know, I kind of tacitly agree. I'll be the vice president until I know what my life is like, and then I could take over if it seems like I could handle more. But like, really, for me, it's more about just the mental space, not the hours. Mm -hmm. I'm just that Nicole will not be able to keep all the balls in the air. Uh, uh, and I'll be busy with you now. So, so just being really honest, like I would love to be able to do it here. <laughs> for me, yeah. For me, I still I feel too green to be chair. Um, I can help. I could I could potentially help with the friends liaison, but I have to say that Wednesdays six are hard. Unless I can bring a nine-year-old in tow with me on occasion when I do them, um, you know. So, but yes, having even just kind of like going to the the, the friend sale and helping there. We, if if we can be flexible about what the liaison position looks like with them coming to some of our meetings, maybe me helping take shifts at um, book sales instead, um, or bringing a nine year old in tow on occasion, I can make that work, um, with more flexibility, but I feel too green as far as all of the ins and outs of a city board, um, even an advisory board to be chair. Yeah, I, I think both of what y'all are saying makes a lot of sense. And this is, I was really hoping by having an informal conversation rather than jumping straight into a more official election, we could do that. Um, so um, I don't want to put my horse forward too much because it doesn't matter, honestly, mm -hmm. what I think. 
but it, it does seem like from this conversation that kind of three roles are emerging with people willing to fill those, a vice chair who may be uh, able to uh, be there when needed for the chair, uh, a friend's liaison, um, you know, knowing there's some flexibility and, and, and a chair role is kind of what I'm hearing every everyone saying. Um, I'm hearing- You look thoughtful, Jamie. I am, I'm always thoughtful. So what are your um, thoughts? <laughs> and, and opinionated. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm also hearing that everyone who's talking has a willingness to step in and fill in, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a, someone has to be somewhere else, um, which feels really lovely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm feeling that there's probably a good deal of flexibility among this group. Uh, then to to work with these positions moving forward and hopefully we get an, on board another t couple of members who can make it not feel like so, so what. Great, and that's been my experience as well in this role is, and I really appreciate everyone's collaborative nature. Okay, so I think what we should do now is go ahead and vote for the chair and vice chair position. And my thought, but this is, y'all y'all decide this, not me. My thought is, is to not vote for an official friends liaison, just knowing that um, the chair and, and kind of like on a volunteer basis. Uh, let me actually, let me rephrase this. I think we should vote for the chair. We should vote for the chair. Chair and the vice chair. Do y'all want to vote for an official that. friends liaison position or just leave, my thought is to leave it open. But any dissenting opinions on that? Okay. Um, okay. So now I guess the only yeah. we we need to know what's happening on Wednesday. <laughs> oh yes. Um, what's yes? So we do need someone to volunteer to go to the meeting to this next meeting oh, to share. I'm already going. Okay. To this to this week's meeting. Yes. Yes, I'm already committed to that. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Okay, right, so then I'd like to go ahead and uh, I guess call or, or move to, to elect a chair and vice chair. Um, does anyone want to put themselves forward or nominate someone else for the chair position? Still yeah, we just talked about it. Yeah, we gotta like have an official for that minutes. Um, I would be willing to serve as chair if the board would have <laughs> Okay, let's do a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Okay, <laughs> would anyone like to nominate themselves or others for the vice chair position? I would be willing to continue as the vice chair. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Perfect. All right, now we have our board elections, um, and Jimmy and I can chat a little bit more um, if you would like, and I'll be here next meeting, but but um, I think it makes sense to go ahead and have the new chair, um, if all right, with the new chair, uh, run next month's meeting, and I can be there as well to jump in. Yeah, if that works. Gradual release. Yep. So it, it takes effect? Yeah, next month. Pretty quickly. Yep. Okay. If that's if that's all right, it is. We have we have we have an agency on that. Wait. Right, any other questions or discussion points before I move on to old business? Jamie, I can add you to the invite that we yeah. have every month, which is a week before this meeting. Oh. Okay. And if that time doesn't work, let me know. But that you can kind of see how we are. Is it at this time? It's <laughs> no. It's earlier it's in the afternoon. afternoon. Not early. What is it? Three or four p.m. Three. The Tuesday prior. Three or three. We should talk. There might be down the road. It can change. Yeah. I'm just okay. saying we we can find a time that way. You can kind of see how we preview mm -hmm. before this yeah. do agenda setting. That's all. Okay. We'll find. Okay. Time. Great. Once again, I really appreciate everyone's willingness to have this type of conversation. It doesn't always go so well. So thank you all. Yeah. I mean, not in this work, but. 
you know, everyone, we've all been in meetings where that doesn't happen as easily. Uh, but other questions or discussion points before moving on? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to old business or, or other major um, item. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to John for a budget update. All right, um, I'm going to share on the screen here. Um, those of you online, I assume you can see a spreadsheet in front of you. So I wanted to share with you this year's budget submission, which, which I was a little unclear of the timing of submission until this morning. So I had to submit this, well, for my purposes. Oh, okay. Yeah, not, okay. yeah, don't not worry. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, the, the budget season starts in early May. Yeah. We, we have a limited time to kind of talk through this and, and put, it, put it into the budget system. My boss wanted it now because there's, there's a number of layers, right? So if I request a position, then it gets submitted over to HR and then it gets submitted to IT because they have to approve equipment. You know, there's these things. So now it's all cycled back. Um, and it's in there. However, um, and, and I can have this group, I think Katie might be the only one that wasn't here last year at this time, but effectively, uh, it's really the same budget I put forward last year um, because uh, that budget, nothing happened with it. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so what, what, I, what I'm showing you here, rather than going into the budget system and giving everything, part of the process is to prioritize um, internally also so that we can send that forward to my boss, my boss's boss, and effectively the, the city manager um, mm -hmm. before it gets to council, but it's good for council to, to, to see these things too of what we have going. Um, and the way the budgeting works here, so there's what you're seeing are what we call level two requests. There's another tab here called level one. So level one requests are requests that we don't have control over, right? So like subscriptions we have to a software agreement, like there's always gonna be maybe a three or 5% increase. Mm -hmm. Or think things like utility bills, which we don't have to worry about here, but you know, that it's generally gonna go up. You have no control over it, you have to pay it. And so you enter that in the, as a level one because it, it's not something you're trying to add to your budget, it's something you have to do to continue the service of those few things. That being said, I still needed to prioritize it. Um, so that's that's what this reflects here. Um, it, it's a little, don't get too hung up on the names. These are budget line item names, which don't mean much unless you're like me and you're in the deep end to the mm. nomenclature of all these things. but. Basically, these are things like our ILS subscription, like major uh, money that goes, which has an annual increase, um, and, and things like that. There, there's two of them here, because one of them, this top line, I'll explain just for a second. As you know, we are a, a member of the Marmot Library Network now, which manages our ILS. We get great support from that, but they do many other things, including managing public computers. And so we would have been talking with them about the idea of them managing our public computers upstairs, the lab, uh, rather than doing it ourselves. Some advantages of that, there's a lot of advantages, but one is, well, of course, they management, so they manage the support through the third-party vendor, which does the print and time management software for the public computers. Um, they take care of, um, the security software that resets computers after a session is all, all these things that we're doing currently, as well as licensing uh, on the computers themselves, which comes up every now and then, and all of a sudden you're faced with, you know, we have uh, 45 plus public computers, and if you multiply that times, oh, you need a new Windows license, and each one is four or $500, but they, part of the, the maintenance agreement would include that. so. Um, I, I, I entered this in as a level one because we have to have public computers and we'll pay for it no matter what. Um, and it looks like a $30,000 ask 
task. In reality, it's kind of not because we would actually let go of the contract we have with our vendor that, that provides the, the print time management. So the two-hour limits and the printing, all that's integrated. And the security software, Deep Freeze, if you've ever heard of Deep Freeze, which resets computers, and a couple other things. Oh, and the licensing. So you drop the cost that we would have and you pay for it for them to support it. Not to mention staff time on both library staff and city IT staff of having them having to manage it. Plus this takes it off of uh, another big advantage of, of Marmot doing it is this would move all the public computers to existing on Marmot's network, not on the city's network. And that's huge for ETS, for IT. Um, because then the, it removes a lot of things that are really sometimes get a little tricky to manage, right? The, the city's filtering is very restrictive um, as far as content that can be brought up online. And it's not to say Marmots is not, that Marmot follows more closely with library standards, which follows SEPA. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a little bit easier to manage that way. Right now we get a fair amount of requests. Someone's in our lab and they want to access something that's completely legitimate, but the city's filtering software blocks them. Um, and so, you know, get, that gets into a little of the weeds on this one, but I just wanted to kind of point out what that would mean um, at, at a cost. But again, it's, you know, we, we could exist the way we are, uh, but it won't cost much less than 30000 So. Um, It'll, it would just be a percent increase, uh, which wouldn't be much less than that. But then we would still manage it, ETS would still manage it. There's a lot of factors. Um, happy to answer questions about that at some point. But um, And then there's some other things along here on the level one, uh, again, that are, are just percentage increases. Um, not as sexy. So the level two, now this is where we really are putting in requests for how to get this library um, moving more towards that preferred level of service, which I, I think everyone here can agree is, is really what we're striving towards. Mm -hmm. So all of these are the same as last year. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing different. I did prioritize it. So staffing, you can see, is a, is a big ask here, right? Mm -hmm. Our children's staff is severely understaffed compared to other departments within the library. Um, and in fact, this summer, uh, we're understaffed enough that I'm, I'm pulling money out of one of our funds mm -hmm. to help support staffing so we can get through summer reading. Mm -hmm. um, that's obviously not sustainable to do. Uh, and this is summer, I mean, I'm doing it for the summer. Um, outreach I've talked about, I mean, if you don't know how important outreach is at this point from my perspective, uh, I don't know what you can hear. But anyway, um, it's, it's very important. So we, th this outreach staff would be part-time staff. This is sort of a dollar amount. That would probably amount to three or four staff depending on how many hours a week they work, but it's part-time. If that happens, our current coordinator, um, Lily, who you've seen plenty of reports from and have seen the work she does, to supervise that many people would need to be reclassed into a position that can supervise more than one person. Um, and then we, and then our CERC staff, the biggest uh, staff makeup in the library as far as a, uh, as a department circulation um, employs um, half of the staff of this total library. So we have 75 total people and half of them are just doing circulation. Right, which includes account maintenance at the surf desk, the info desk, and then people that you may not always see, shelvers, mm -hmm. uh, you probably do see them if you're here enough. Um, another position we have called pages, which also do shelving, they work on the desk, and they also pull holds for other libraries. A lot of work goes into CERT, always understaffed. They consistently go over budget mm -hmm. every year. Uh, and that's just working the minimum. And the only reason we survive that is sometimes we have cost savings elsewhere because we're good with money. Um, and then you get into other areas. So um, I don't know if I go through all 27, but you know, 
uh, databases, th this would get us more to spending on digital resources like a library of the size would normally spend. Mm -hmm. So we could add thing, other streaming services that, well, other, we don't have any streaming services. All we have is ebooks and databases. Mm -hmm. um, high demand things that we should be providing for a population of over 100,000 people. Um, sitting next to me is Tracy, who has been doing the work of an administrative analyst for all, uh, at least since I've been here, if not more. Um, so this is one of the higher top priorities here um, uh, to, to put Tracy into a position that she's already been working. Um, and then we get into, uh, it, it's within, so there's kind of two things here. We have a supplies line item and a professional contracted services line. Between the two, uh, these two increases really, and I've tried to describe this in the title, but much more in the description, which you're not seeing. This is what give, would give us our programming budget, which we've never had. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So right. the, the, the stuff that the friends pays for. Mm -hmm. And so this is duplicated right below in children's. And so it's it's two separate things because you have the supplies part, you know. So think children's. That's a lot of materials and things when they have crafts or anything that supports a program. Professional contractor would be hiring, right? So performers or maybe even an author, you know, of some sort. But basically, between the two. So with adult, you know, we're looking at eleven. What, twelve thousand with, with children's we're looking at um, a little over twenty thousand, which is in line with about what they spend currently on programming. And they say what they spend, I, what I mean is what the friends contribute to that programming. Um, professional development I've talked about. You know, we, we have right now, just to give you a sense, I, I'm asking for sixteen thousand, which would get us up to about twenty thousand professional development dollars, meaning we only have five right now. Okay. And so, as you know, the Friends generously supported some staff going to the Public Library Association. Mm -hmm. I mean, that alone, and that was sending five staff. I mean, in a normal budget year, if I had my own budget for it, I might send two or three. Okay. Um, because that, that adds up. But even that, I could have afforded, and I still would have had 10000 for other professional development. So, um, huge deal. Collection increases, uh, again, to get us to preferred level of service, but also to account for the pack that we're doing pre-processing and having shelf-ready materials, which comes at a cost, which we have never budgeted for because we didn't do it. Um, uh, that's kind of a lag along here, and then you get into more outreach. Again, the outreach similar to the other to have their own programming budget. So between supplies and, and um, professional services, I think that would allow outreach to have their own supplies and to bring in other performers, which they do now. Again, support through the friends, um, adding a full-time position to outreach, as well as the part-time that I indicated way up here. It's hard to prioritize this, by the way. Um, you, know, you know, this is a little nominal, but I would like us to have more options for when we're out and about so that we oh, have yeah. common, like, just like other departments do, they have t-shirts and hats. And I've managed that for what we have now as a library. I've just found money to do it here okay. and there, but it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and then I asked for this last year, um, and, and, and so this is probably, in my mind, more realistic of what I think could be accomplished in the shorter term as opposed to a full-blown 30-some million dollar branch library. Mm -hmm. A storefront might be leasing space, but we still need to staff it, and what does that include? You know, so you have different costs here, so staffing are along here, and some IT needs. The the general storefront library, that includes like leasing the space somewhere and, and other operational costs. Um, you know, if that were ever to come to fruition through our budget, I would anticipate this being something that would exist in the north of the one month, mm -hmm. which I consistently hear is where we need library services. 
Um, and that kind of gets you through, and then we have two vans, one that was su support said storefront library so we can get materials back and forth. Okay. And then a van for outreach specifically, although this, which is not showing up on my spreadsheet here, this actually wouldn't be impacted by the budget. I have always in intended to pay for this out of our Mosher fund mm -hmm. um, to get that, although the ongoing cost would be under our regular budget. So there's, there's actually no one-time budgetary impact on that as far as the city goes, because I already have the funds for it. So that kind of gets you to all In going back to the increasing the, I think it was the children's books, yep. there's one example that came up that said that an ongoing expense, maybe it was, oh, right over there. So children's books increase. Yeah. So if you have it listed as ongoing. Correct. So is that, so yeah, tell me more. Because I, so I, what I was envisioning is just you're purchasing books. Yeah, ongoing means if, if, if this were approved, this mm -hmm. amount, uh -huh. that means every year going forward, mm -hmm. that's my new budget for, for children's materials. Okay. Until so I ask you'd for be more. circulating out old books and then bringing you in? Or well, we always do. You always do, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there an easy way to see where those numbers are right now? Um, in other words, like what where it says now? increase, yeah, to see how much of an increase it constitutes. Yeah, I could, item. I could. I mean, there's not an easy way here okay. in the moment in this meeting, but mm -hmm. I, I, I can tell you, like with children's books, what we yeah. spend. Uh -huh. um, it's yeah, it's not so asking a hundred and thirty thousand increase. We're spending not even half of this. Okay, so here I am wondering, like, oh, is that like a fifty percent increase? Yeah, it's. But to this, I, I, it's. It, I know what you mean. It's yeah. more than. It's more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like doubling or mm -hmm. even potentially more Correct. than that. Yeah, and and that's. Not true in every single line here, but yeah, mm -hmm. with something, it just depends what you're looking at. So like what I wish that I could see at a glance with this type of document is like, I know that you've put them in order of priority, yeah, which sure. the might be the budget. same thing. Like where, where is it really just the most underfunded, right? The gap between where we should be mm -hmm. and where we are. But I, that probably aligns with your priorities, right? Yeah, Somewhat. I mean, it's it's a little tricky in, in some way with the priority. Um, yeah, this this exercise I, I didn't like at all. Mm -hmm. Well, and some of these, you don't because have Because everything's to, priority one. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like how do I dif differentiate, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it's just... Um, and you have some things on there that there's no money allocated for it so far. Right, like right. the branch storefront. Yeah, the, library, like, yeah, like the storefront, there's right right nothing. Now. Yeah. For the new outreach library, I'm assuming some of the outreach and programming, because if there is no... You don't have the funds for it. There's no outreach funding yeah. period. Mm -hmm. So that's all 100%. Yeah. There's nothing. There's no programming. So all the supplies and contracted, that's 100%. We, don't, we have zero. Um, John, you have, I can't remember which line it was. So you have the uh, line 14 or number 12 in the ranking. That's all materials collection increase. Is that print? Yes. Okay. The, there's a separate um, ebooks. Oh, oh right, well, that right below. Right below. Yeah. And I'll just add some context. In my understanding, and John, let me know if I'm wrong, I don't know another public library around who does not provide streaming services of some sort. Like, that's really, like, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, mm -hmm. and Lindsay and I, I do not have a background in public libraries, seems to be very common in other libraries. So these are not correct out of the blue. And I, I think that's something that we want to communicate yeah. as a board and our, our communication with council. Yeah. Um, 
And, and just to, to go back quickly to the level one request, um, and you might have, I just want to, if anyone doesn't know, ILS is for Integrated Library System, which is like the software that runs everything. <laughs> like, no, without it, we Like, can't there's no, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's so, I mean, it, you, you can't function without a lot of things, but like, you literally you can't check out, but like, there's, it, it's so necessary. Um, other questions and comments for John? Okay, so our role is a board, um, in my mind, um, this has been submitted. Thanks for sharing uh, this granularity, John. Um, we have the decision whether or not we support this budget, um, and which I do. Um, and but we, we need to discuss that as a group and, and vote on it. Um, and then uh, we we want to communicate that to council as well. Um, so let's go ahead and first decide as a group, um, you know, how how we support this budget. And then we can talk a little bit more about communicating that to uh, to council. So I. Uh, one second, I'm pulling up my notes from last year because I want to use similar language. I lost. Can you go off the yeah. um, spreadsheet screen? That's a weird one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can. I just want to make sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, we're using, you're requesting to use some of our, is it, I don't know which of our outside funds it was just to cover like a summer temporary position. Was that what I it was. It was yeah. written. It was what we voted on. Um, so we went through the process, I want to say two or three meetings ago. Yeah, I had put forward to the board to, we have a fund called the Mosher Fund, which is the name of the family that, that um, put that for this library and we're allowed to spend on the interest. So yeah, it was a two or three meetings ago I put forward to spend it on a couple of things. One was to support summer reading and that will be in the form of additional staffing hours to support it. And then the other, uh, unrelated to that, but that was to support our um, staff uh, in service day that we just had Friday, and I brought in two trainers, so it will pay for those trainers for that. Any other points of clarification? Okay, then I move, um, that we vote in uh, support of the budget request put forward for, um, in, I guess, for the 2025 year. Uh, <laughs> as <laughs> I'm sure. I I this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I move that we vote. Um, I, I move that we vote in support of the 2025 budget. Any second? Thanks, Judy. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so we are. Wait, I don't need to vote because I put it forth. Okay, we um, have now voted unanimously in support of, of this budget request. Um, so, what we have done, so now we, that's step one. Step two is we need to communicate. In, the, in our role as an advisory board, part of our annual duties are to review. Um, and share recommendations with council related to the budget. Um, so uh, last year, um, we emailed council um, and uh, we said that in keeping with our primary functions and duties, the board reviewed the library's annual budget request and unanimously voted in support of the request that the library will be putting forward. And then we pulled out, I, I pulled out like a few specifics to mention, and we said, although we are in support of the entire budget proposal, I would like to mention a few specifics. Yes. Okay. Um, so I would like to follow that similar communication, unless anyone else would like to see me do that a different way. All right, so what I heard, the notes I took, and, and everyone feel free to jump in, um, uh, the net site took that were most important. So we importance for level one requests to be fulfilled to allow for subscription increases and updates 
to the ILS to be in line with the Marmot Consortium. I hope I got that right in a nutshell. <laughs> um, we are, the next one I pull, pulled out from hearing Don speak, increase to staff wages, including temporary for circulation and children's and teens, um, as well, uh, and then I have a separate item for the, for the outreach. Um, increase to database, uh, to the database budget to provide materials such as streaming services, um, promotion for the administrative assistant, reclassing the bilingual outreach manager to sh uh, better share the broad range of services, materials, and supports offered by the library, as well as adding additional uh, part-time and full-time staff to for outreach. Increase to professional and contracted services um, and uh, professional development, and then last of all, increase to print, or not to print, but increase to collections. I can repeat that. Those were the notes I took. Mm -hmm. I will wordsmith that to make it sound much better. Um, but that is what I would like to send to council that we are we have voted in support of the full budget, and these are uh, some specifics we would like to call attention to. Does that sound good, to everyone? Susie, is there a better way that we sh should be communicating that you know of? So I think any communication, definitely CC Harold. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I do for all of them. Okay. So yeah. if you haven't already. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. When you're worth the thing, could you, it drives me crazy when somebody is doing work for which they aren't being paid. So not just a promotion for admin, but a promotion for someone who's already doing the work. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great point. Mm -hmm. And when when is the promotion to again, John? Um, it, from administrative assistant to administrative analyst. Administrative analyst, thanks. And I, you know, in the way I put this into the budget by the way it's not it's it's more about the needs of the library and how that role needs to be in place to support the library and the person in the admin role is the right one to have that sorry to talk to you about the third person in the player state. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with that. Yeah I mean <laughs> But I, I just want to be clear, you know, I mean, I, I could, if it's just the nature of, I want to promote this person, that, that could be almost anyone here. This is mm -hmm. a, a critical role in this library that's already been doing this job. Mm -hmm. and, you, and we don't function without it. Okay, right, so critical for, I want to just expand a little bit yeah. on, the, on why it's critical in, in our communication. So critical just to support the overall Function of the library. Function of the library and also um, our patrons. Because yeah. you get into areas of like this room, meeting room management, fielding a lot of customer things that other staff don't know. Mm -hmm. There's like, many unknowns. So I'm going to go ahead and say the specialized role of the administrative yeah. analyst is important to the overall function of the yeah. library and our patrons. It feels very operational. Right. Yeah, and, and for what it's worth, you know, others in the, the city who have analyst roles are, are basic, and it's hard to compare one to one because there are different departments, but you know, if you look at it at the higher level, I mean, that's the work that's being done now, and those people are already analysts for more. You know, there's a higher level. Great, so unfortunately, I am not able to to draft something and share it out over email. I also would like to send this out before the next meeting, um, due to like the timing that these submissions were just put forth. Um, it seems to make sense to do it now. Um, so unfortunately, that means I cannot share the final communication with you all as a group, um, and that would violate Sunshine Laws. Um, so. I am just wanting to make sure it's okay with everyone. We, we will send, I will share what we voted on. I'm gonna call it those specifics. 
specifics. Uh, would anyone, does anyone else have suggestions for things they would like to make sure I mention um, within that list? Yeah. Um, I wrote down pretty much the same things that you did. I was wondering about categorizing them slightly differently um, in order to accommodate more of the specific line items. So, um, and again, it's not up on, well, it's somewhere on the screen, but my notes were that the main buckets were staffing, professional and contracted services, and collection development. Outside of the level two uh, asks, is, is that kind of true? Not everything falls into those three, but the majority of the, the top of those. Staffing, um, I would couch professional contract of service just as what, I mean, that's the programming. But I want to say programming that stretches across those three departments. Yeah, that have right, yeah. Um, and then collection development, both physical and digital. digital. Correct. I, I, would I, like, I think that can help. Okay. I would really like to call it outreach because I just think that is such yeah. a one that's been. You can. We've asked for a, a lot. But, and it still yes. fits within staffing. It fits within all of them. So. I think you can, you can mention specifics too. Yeah. But when you hear the the, the broader categories. Um, at least to someone who's been kind of swimming in this for a year and change, um, it should it should ring a bell, right? This isn't um, a new position title or a new specific contract with a vendor that nobody else knows, right? It's like, no, this is what we are asking for to fill specific holes that you have heard about in various other ways. Um, and the, my other comment is also like a bit more on strategy in terms of can we put in a sentence that, um, that recommends to council not only approval of this budget and these specific line items but um, to somehow elevate it a bit and say like to seriously consider uh, any any request that represents you fill in the blank a new need a dire need a high priority need like I, I don't know I'm not at wordsmithing yeah. point either but what I'm trying to grasp at is this looks like a longish list. There's a lot of zeros and commas and things in there. It's a lot of money. We didn't get, the library did not get that money last year. The needs have not changed. And so can it be made clear somehow without being obnoxious that um, you're funding a gap. We're asking you to fill in a gap, not to add on and expand in um, in cosmetic or frivolous ways. There are not enough steps. Yeah, I, I think that's good. Right, I'm saying I'm running on the term. Do either of you have any like better word like language words? I don't feel I, like I'm, be, I'm doing a good job. No, I think the no, sorry. Any, sorry. Go for it, Kaji. Oh, I was just saying I think I think you're highlighting, and of course I'm also thinking like how do we make this and get another opportunity to remind them of the obligations. Um, I think one I thing think that one thing that I'm just one thing that you're saying. Uh oh, Katie, would you mind muting for a second? Ready? Yeah, I think yours is echoing. It just it just echoed a bit. Perfect. Yeah. Right, thanks. Yeah, I don't know how to do this without some kind of a mail front, but basically like we're not gonna keep using this money to like pay for things that should be covered by the city. Yeah. Like, okay, we're gonna do this one time as a stopgap measure, but we're not gonna keep stopgapping. <laughs> 
like services will be cut unless we don't really feel that in which case i guess we shouldn't say that but I, if we just keep filling the gap all the time with these other funds and with making people do way more than they should for the money they earn they're never going to give us what we want them to give us which is an appropriate level of funding I'm taking notes. Wait, so this needs this needs this needs are expensive once again. But wait, so I like the idea of Jamie's three buckets. I will order that list within them. Um, we need to communicate that these are say these are services and resources that are lo all local libraries have. Um, yeah, that was what I was going to bring up too. Just that comment that you had made that there is no other um, library around that doesn't offer these. And I checked while I was on while we were chatting. Like DPS, um, it, it's not enough to have a library card. You have to have a library card and be a resident of Denver to access the streaming services. Because I know I feel like a lot of stopgap happens too. Because in Colorado, you can get library cards at any library, but. There, but you know, I have a, a Denver library card and I cannot access their streaming services yeah. because I don't live there. Yes, mm. so we are lack, we are truly lacking these things. We can't just rely on Denver for them. Mm -hmm. We are truly lacking them. That's a good point. I'm writing that down. Okay, so we're gonna mention the for next. Uh, we're gonna mention the larger context uh, that these needs have not changed from last year. We are funding a gap of needed services uh, due to the lack of budget from the 20, due to the lack of 20 budget from 2024. Um, and that these needs are not able to be filled by, uh, by other funds uh, or means such as have been used by the past. All right, other comments? Well then, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna write this up. Um, Jimmy is the incoming chair for next month. Since we're switching, I'd like to just send you what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. um, and if anyone else wants an individual copy, just let me know. Just please communicate only with me, um, because we don't want to be a violation of, of any sort of regulations. Um, and then I'm gonna be sharing this with all the council members as well as CC on the city manager and assistant city manager. Um, and also I have previously CC on uh, John's boss, uh, Jeff in the past as well. So I will continue to do that. Okay, other questions or uh, discussion points on uh, old under the budget update under old business before you move on? Okay. Uh, thank you all. These were, like I said, two leaf agent items, mm -hmm. but we've gotten through them. And now let's go ahead and move on to reports and information items. And John, I'll hand it right back to you. Yeah, just a couple things for director update. I wanted to just share with you on Friday, we had our annual um, in service day with staff, which I felt was really good. Um, haven't received all the feedback from staff yet. Yeah, we always ask for feedback on it, but mm -hmm. we did some pretty important topics. We, we had a, a two hour training uh, with a, a social worker who comes from Illinois who does a lot of this kind of work with libraries specifically on a trauma informed approach to patron, mm -hmm. um, what's it called? Trauma informed approach to, anyway. <laughs> I forgot the title of the presentation, but it was, um, I thought it was good, it, you know, it was, um, and some of the staff that have told me felt that it was pretty valuable, you know, as far as that whole concept is, you know, I always couch it as really separating yourself from the person you're interacting mm -hmm. with and knowing that, you know, they call it trauma informed when everyone comes to you with, with experiences on any level. And, and something you or someone else say may trigger something and lead to some sort of behavior or interaction that's not favorable, but how do you approach it mm -hmm. to better 
and really what the reason I almost did this session is not so much working with patrons, but maybe yes it is, but it's more so what how do you manage and take care of yourself uh, when you have interactions like that and, and tools for approaching. And there's some to-dos for me from that training. I think there's some, it, some of which she provides. I just need to kind of share it with staff, but it's sort of like checklists or, or quick, even like little mini scripts of like, if someone does this, you could say this, you know? And I think that kind of stuff is meaningful for staff. Um, so that was really good. And then the other um, big topic on, that we did on that day was uh, in the EDI realm, we had a, a two hour session on um, allyship and microaggression, well microaggressions and allyship I guess, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was really good. I think the presenter was excellent. Um, uh, really did a good job of explaining, first of all, what microaggressions are and how to recognize them and how we can support each other. And we certainly have had some incidents here, not from staff to staff necessarily, but certainly from neighborhoods to staff. And what are we doing about that? Um, and kind of trying to catch that in the in the moment if we can, or at least at least so our staff who are experiencing it, knowing your coworkers, see that. Yeah. You know. Um, so I thought those were very meaningful, and in general, I think the, the day was was really good. Um, and then um, I met with Sandy Cedar and my boss Jeff just last week. Um, Sandy had done, and she's done this before, but she has some experience and background in doing strategic planning mm -hmm. and um, did a, an all day um, strategic planning session at the museum uh, last year, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Jeff. Uh, my boss spoke very highly of so I reached out to her and we met and, and shared some ideas of what I'm hoping to see and so she's going to kind of think about that and give me a little bit of a proposal I think that'd be great for this library uh, first of all we, we need something we need to kind of come up with our own direction but guided with somebody else um, I really liked her approach of how she does this um, and so we'll see. I'll update the board more as that comes. We just had an initial meeting. I anticipate what that'll look like is with uh, a, some core group of staff members, probably 10 to 12 people at most. Um, we have a, a team that can easily do that as it stands, what we call our leadership team here. But I, I, I may rethink that a little not to discount anyone there. I don't want it too big, but the leadership team isn't equally divided. So it's like, I only have one person from Children's on that team, but I have three people from Circulation or Tech Services, so I feel like I need a look at balance. But anyway, I'll follow up on that. I, I'm looking forward to something like that. Um, and then lastly, um, no, that was last. No, lastly, sorry, <laughs> my notes are in the order that I just said that. Um, so if you, didn't see um, state legislature actually revised the bill I brought up here before about sort of this, uh, I keep couching it as ban on book banning, but that's not really what it is, but they did pass legislation. Um, I would imagine captains are well aware of this given your research, but um, that uh, it, it was rewritten to be directed for public libraries, the original legislation which failed in committee or didn't get through committee was because it was trying to encompass both public and school libraries. And I think in particular with some public library director input uh, and really talking with legislatures who were willing to listen, uh, basically heard us say, these are very two different institutions and they need their own legislation if that's gonna happen. Um, and whether anything happens with, with school libraries separately, I don't know, but the public library will be, is done. Um, one interesting note about that, however, is at least in, a, in a, a quick email dialogue with one of the city attorneys here that supports the library, the legislation specifically states in there uh, that everything around that um, goes through, and I quote, library boards of trustees and and if you if you 
look around and, and get into library land, you are not a board of trustee, right? Right. You're on an advisory board, and so in the city attorney's office opinion, this legislation wouldn't apply to this library, and that's not necessarily a bad thing in my mind. We already have a policy in place. I just revised it, and the, this board mm -hmm. got motion on what I put forward. It actually matches pretty closely what the legislation says anyway. Mm -hmm. I think the advantage that we have in doing that is outside of a board of trustee, if, if the legislation were to apply, it would skip the board, the advisory board, and council would become the right. board mm -hmm. of trustee. And that's nothing to say anything about council. Yeah. I just think it, the further removed you are from it, it's it's better and it's better for council if we were to be a library that's bombarded with um you know re requests for reconsideration challenges that would fall on council and i'm sure there's plenty of better things to do so mm -hmm. the library has managed it we can continue to manage it when i do when i have received um challenge uh, letters or requests i do bring them here mm -hmm. um so I, I think our our method works uh knock on wood we don't face any of these things that some of the other areas in this country have. But just to let you know, that did pass. Um, and, and how it affects here, I feel like maybe nothing at the moment. I think that's really, I, I mean, it sounds like it's out of our hands anyway, but I think that's really good because it, it also allows for a more a, a quicker response time to the patron. So like, I, I do think it keeps it as a patron-centered approach. Um, as is. So, uh, pe pending any questions or comments on those things, that's my director update. Thanks, John. Uh, questions or comments for John? And oh, it looks like we have the uh, oh, the, bill is up. the the actual yeah. language. Thanks, John. Yeah. Um, I just thought it'd be useful. Yeah. The only thing, John, that this bill does, it looks like, is that it protects library librarians, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so our our city doesn't have a policy that would protect you necessarily, but it, it, it doesn't, you know, and that that's that's an advantage of the legislation. So you know, library staff, yeah. like like you've seen, and it's fortunately, you know, it's not rampant throughout the country, but you know, if you look at other states, certainly, like, uh, I think it's Arkansas or Alabama or both, where the librarians can be criminalized for mm -hmm. leaving a book that's considered inappropriate, and those are the exact, that's the exact word, and who's to judge that, and that you can be fired, mm -hmm. or charged, or both. You can be criminally charged, yeah, but there's currently a stay, that doesn't help that much, but... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that line, yeah. Yeah. I think you know. I I, I think it, where we are here, in general in Colorado. I mean, there's parts of Colorado that are probably a little closer to that, but I feel Longmont's a lot further away from that, and is much more. Um, the the citizenship here is interested in going down that path, or at least you know not not large numbers that are informing that kind of direction, I guess you would call it. Great. Other questions or comments for John? Will you just keep us abreast with the new policy if, if you end up, you know, having any feedback or what your experience is with it? Of course, yeah. Great. Okay. Any updates? Uh, Jamie mentioned any, any updates from the friends that are in front of the at this time? Yes. The most recent Mother's Day sale was right before Mother's Day. Um, grossed over eleven thousand oh, dollars, which is a new record uh, for the friends. At least in the in for a long, long time. I did not see that that was um, you know, for the entire term of their existence, which is 40 years, yeah. 40 years this year. Um, but certainly in the memory of anyone who is currently involved, 
it is a record. Um, there were a couple of things, probably many factors that contributed to that, um, but they are getting better with their communications and their own outreach and advertising, um, building more momentum, word of mouth, um, putting up more signage, uh, really highlighting, um, I think it's maybe the only the past two sales where it's felt like a really obvious um, push to bring awareness to what the funds are used for and what the sale is for and what it supports. So I don't know if this was like my fifth or sixth sale that I uh, I volunteered at. And in those early sales, um, I would hear uh, frequently that um, people, patrons didn't understand the difference between us and the employed staff. People thought all of the books in the sale were from the library discards. Um, they thought the money was, you know, for extras. Um, and that, it, you know, maybe it was augmenting parts of the library budget that were, you know, decent as is. So getting more um, direct in that messaging, mentioning the bill, you know, many of the board members who work at the cash, cash it's not a register, at the checkout table, um, they have talking points that they keep at the table and everyone who does a shift at the table is encouraged to mention, weave in those talking points about the work of the friends so it helps bring awareness to the library's current library. Oh, I think you're echoing. That's me? Yeah. So it brings... I was just gonna say that's a great idea, oh. that there's a, a cheat sheet with talking points. Yeah. yeah. That was Lois, one of the board members, board secretary for the Friends. And it, it also brings awareness to what the Friends do, because that volunteer group also very much needs new membership, um, not just new membership to the Friends, but new uh, board involvement, people who, who want to do some more of the, the heavy lifting. Um, they have some significant uh, roles that are expected to turn over in the next year. So having new people come in uh, will be really, really helpful. And the last thing I will mention is that um, in addition to their signs and their talking points, um, they have uh, put out a donation jar. And then depending on individual uh, comfort level, I've, I've sat next to volunteers who will just say, you know, would you like to? They raised the price of the $5 bags and the messaging around that I thought was pretty good that it, it is, they've, they've done the $5 bag sale the last day um, for a long time and um, as the costs of the library and the things that the Friends Fund, as those costs continue to rise, we have to raise our prices too in order to be able to give gifts of the same value to the library, have that same purchasing power. We need to raise our prices and so it's a good cause and you're doing something great for the library and there were some grumbles but but no one really fought it or complained loudly. And many, many people bought an $8 bag. We made change and those $2 went into the donation bucket. So I will be eager to hear on Wednesday night um, just a more detailed breakdown of that revenue and um, what we brought in in donations because I, I believe that that's counted separately. Um, but I, it was it was in the high hundreds, I would guess. Just asking. 
Questions or comments for Jamie? It's a really great update. I will also share that uh, I submitted, I told you all this, um, submitted the friends for one of the Colorado Association of Library Awards. Mm -hmm. um, I really think that uh, their efforts are so important and, and I want them to get that recognition. Um, I'll make sure if, if that uh, they don't get that award this year, I'll make sure and pass along any materials. Mm -hmm. um, so if the board wants to next year, if, um, they don't receive that recognition this year, uh, those materials can be repurposed. Comments, other comments or questions? Hey, Susie, okay. I see a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so our, um, so it's kind of nice because they printed these out for us since the TVs aren't working. Mm -hmm. So we can't show, you know, we can't see on our computer screen the slideshow. So they printed it out, but then it made me realize, oh, yeah, we're filling a lot of things. So we did go over, you know, the introduction to the operating budget. I think something to keep in mind, um, you know, as public, you know, there are two ballot measures this fall that could have a negative impact to our um, property tax projections and sale tax, so the, the level of income that the city would receive. So, I, you know, I still need to, to do some research. I, I, you know, I wouldn't make a recommendation on whether or not to support or um, vote against, but definitely, you know, do some research on that. Um, yeah, and I think the other one, there was another one, Senate Bill 233. Um, you know, depending on the um, analysis of the impacts to that, um, there's a 2.2 million that we have available in our general fund that may be available for use on ongoing, but they're, you know, currently it's um, from the property tax revenue that, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me um, that it's to be used for one-time expenses. So we're, we're kind of waiting to get the analysis from Senate Bill 233. Um, you know, something else that they, you know, uh, the LMAC had come to present for us, and they had an ask for us of increasing their, their budget as well. And I think it, for them it was fifty thousand. I mean, they're, they're not a huge. They're an advisory board, or you know, so they're not. You know, they don't have overhead or anything. But it was really around outreach. So in kind of thinking about that group, and you know, I can share their slideshow. But I'm wondering if there's crossover even between the library and what they're doing, and maybe as a cost savings. But what they're trying to accomplish, like some kind of coordination between the two. So what LMAC's doing, um, and I, I'll share with you. So, and they're, they're the, they used to be the- What is that abbreviation? Um, it is the Multicultural, Longmont Multicultural Action Committee. And so, yeah, here, and I'll share their, and I'll pass that around, um, what they, they do so really they do a lot of stuff with um, the events you know the organization of these events and outreach and marketing um, as well as addressing you know the microaggressions discriminations that um, you know that Longmont residents um, have, have faced so really how to how to go about that they they've come They've made recommendations towards council as far as you know the kind of training that we that they recommend we should receive as well. So and this was another executive summary so I can pass that around too. So I'm wondering if there's a way to kind of coordinate efforts. You know that might be a good a good avenue. Um, and you know especially since I'm hearing you know and I you know I have to laugh. Um, because I do negotiations for the school district. So when we have our finance team come in, you know, do the room, and so they come in and you know, they just share everything that's going wrong. And then, you know, I hear Jim talk about, you know, it's the same thing. They're just trying to be very conservative, as is their role. But, you know, you just kind of hear like, the sky's falling. So, <laughs> so, you know, things that we have to watch out for. Um, and so I think, you know, something that is way heavy on the mind is making sure that we are um, keep in mind as far as staff compensation, you know, our, our philosophy is paying that market market rate, the 
that, looking at that average. So we're paying our employees well. So we want to ensure that we can still, you know, that that is a priority that we continue to to do that. So I think that's something that they think about as we work through the budget as well. Um, some other things, you know, we've been hearing a lot of news around the airport. Um, currently, FAA, the FAA. <laughs> the airport so currently they want to really put some restrictions as far as building around the um the flight path and so there's this large oval that pretty much covers the entire western part of longmont where they really say oh you shouldn't build on there or you know if you want grants and our federal funding um you know we don't want any liability in these spaces so you know, we were kind of working through and trying to find a happy medium. And it seems like they are willing to negotiate looking at this little, it's a paddleboard type shape that's that's more narrow. But really the building would be more restricted in that small section, but we would still have the building, you know, kind of around. Because they really can't mandate that we, you know, these are private property reasons. So we have our own codes, <laughs> and so, yeah, so really, essentially, it's just we would be willing to negotiate this area, this zone A, zone B, that's more like a paddleboard shape. And it's a real narrow sliver, um, but there are impacts to right away that we heard from some developers who are looking at property that maybe kind of cuts into that section. So we're kind of going back and forth. Nobody from the um, you know, the federal agency came to say, well, why are we doing this? All of a sudden they just decided this is an issue and we need to adhere to it. Otherwise we run the risk of losing um, federal grants and funding for the airport. So we invited them to come to a future council meeting so, meeting so we can discuss this. So we did not make any decisions on this yet. We're waiting to hear. So for anyone who's interested in the library or um, airport business and that whole thing, you know, that'll be coming up to a future agenda. So Is it just post. for new new building? New building. Okay. New building. I think there is a section where there are some houses on Nelson Road. There's a development where a little corner of it is kind of cut into that paddleboard that zone b section that but it, it's already been there so we're not talking about removing homes or removing buildings they just want us as future builds they want us to really cut back on the development in that path of the airport um, yeah and then you know we got the air show is going to be in september i believe september 14th is what's Coming on, there are there are some training um, happening. So if you've seen more airplane activity, they did mention that they're doing the um, the training for um, you know the water like fire. You know, they, when there's forest fires, you know, taking the airplanes out. So so they're doing a lot of that What's going on right now. I think other things that we've see. I don't have to go over everything, but. Um, Vision Zero, the traffic safety. We did hear a report from the state of Boulder County and about the, um, the 287 corridor, especially south of um, Prospect. If there's, out, there's, a, there's been a lot, a high number of fatalities and it's ever growing. So they're looking at, you know, putting some kind of guardrail or barrier in between the traffic, because the majority of accidents that are happening are happening when cars go across the oncoming. Maybe they're on the phone, or they're tired, or they're drunk, or, but it, to have some kind of bar barrier that keeps them from crossing over. So that's something we'll be doing in collaboration with the state and the county to, to get that one done. And going from highest need, highest priority, and working down. So I think, and then, you know, in, um, to go with what you all were talking about, the complaint form. So we did um, approve a city council ethics complaint form. So if a, a member of the community has a complaint against one of us mm -hmm. on council, we actually have a platform for them to 
um, to file and submit a formal complaint. And we never had anything like that before. I know people would come to city council and say, you know, I have this complaint against so and so for this, but it was like, okay, <laughs> thank you. And there was never anything that would follow that. So this one, it would, and we've changed some language in our um, ethics that, um, you know, what would warrant a frivolous one or what would be considered a viable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it's the punishment might be, um, you know, you're being um, excused from your meetings or, you know, from the uh, boards and commissions who wouldn't be allowed to, to participate in those or censored or, you know, something to that degree. So depending on what the complaint is. Um, we've also, every year we go through our licensing and code updates for, um, for alcohol, marijuana. Um, there's been some um, push or some requests from the community to have, um, to have hospitality licenses. So it would be, so the one woman is a massage therapist, but to be able to use oils or um, creams that have the, the THC in them, we, you'd have to have a special license. So in order to have that, you know, we'd have to adhere to that. And then another member of the community just wants a place to go and smoke weed. So, um, so yeah, we're kind of discussing that whole that whole thing. There is a state statute that allows us to have. Um, I think currently under our own the, um, city ordinances, we wouldn't be able to expand more than four. So I can't imagine. I mean, we could go all the way, but that would include maybe a massage therapist who's using TAC in the treatment or a social hospitality. So, so yeah, so that was interesting. We're just kind of going through those right now. So I don't know if you have any questions for me. Oh, and the other one is next Wednesday at six o'clock in the St. Brain School District Boardroom. We are having a joint meeting, school district, school board. And I did add to the agenda to talk about the student ID program. For a card, so I'm just gonna just because I, you know, get nowhere. Would it help us? You can come I mean, if, you want. If, there were, I mean, if there's questions, yeah. I mean, that Sandy might ask you because it's the library. I know anything that we put on the agenda, and there's a, a department that's it pertains to, they usually have a representative staff person there. So this is same thing, yeah. Our school board, the school board, yes, and city council, yes. Oh, yes. Is Dominic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he was the first one that said yes. <laughs> but, um, 29th? It is Wednesday. Is that the 29th? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let's check it out. Yes. Wednesday, the 29th, at what time? At 6 o'clock. Where? The, and it's currently it's showing up as being on the school, in the school board room. Um, three, it's. 395 Pratt Street or South Pratt Parkway. Oh, do you know where that is? Do you know where that's at? Yep. Okay. It's like right up the street from the Oh, it's safe, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fire station. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's like the public. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Really? Yeah. got on there. Yes, yes. Asked a few times and then finally I just made a formal motion and Everybody got it. Cool. Okay. Can't get me the calendar real quick. I think it's at six. I notice when I put my computer down, it kicks me off the internet. Yep. It's not a, an issue, it's a feature. <laughs> You're on a roll tonight. <laughs> okay, yes, six o'clock. In the border. And that's all I have, unless you have any questions for me. Thanks so much for this update. Yeah.
Uh, okay, our next uh, agenda item like group question is the one I had uh, that I was aware of was we've already discussed uh, the, the state legislation. Um, anyone want to chime in anything else here? Great, then our next item, the agenda or agenda item is library board comments and I would like to make a comment. I meant to make this earlier. We used to elect a secretary every year and I think that's the hardest position to stay on any board. So I just want to thank Tracy again for taking notes um, and doing such a great job doing that. Uh, it's really relieved a lot um, from these responsibilities. Any other library board comments? We'll just, uh, we'll just hold on, try again. We don't have that position to use for hazing new members now, so it's kind of a, <laughs> a flip side to that that we should just acknowledge. That's true. It used to get the new, new member, <laughs> which really meant you could get stuck right away. <laughs> so, that's not the best way to handle it, probably. Um, Okay, well, our next meeting is uh, June 17th. Uh, since we do have a smaller group, I know we will have one member out. Um, so we just need to have three to have a quorum. So if anyone else is going to be out, please just email me when you know. Um, and that way I can uh, let Tracy know as well. Okay, otherwise we will adjourn at 8.57. Thank you all.